Hey everybody, Excalibur here. I'm just getting over a cold, but I need to get some video out, so I thought I would go ahead and do some unboxings today while I could. Um, and uh, yeah, there are some things that are different. You may notice that the hair is uh, trimmed up and the beard has been shaved down. And my wife wanted me to do some manscaping. <laughs> so here we are. Anyway, we are going to be unboxing, hey, the Battle for Faerun. D&D Dice Master Starter Set. I picked up two of these as what I usually do with any of the uh, Dice Master's kits so I have the dice necessary to fill out the cards. And uh, we are also going to, <laughs> a couple, uh, we're going to be opening up some boosters as well. Uh, each booster has two dice and two cards and um, we're going to be doing some opening. So while well, we go ahead and get on with it, get this stuff open and we will see we have in store. Welcome back everybody. This is the Battle for Faerun Dungeons and Dragons Dice Masters kit. Um, I will also be getting a hold of the uh, Minsk and Boo cards later on today, hopefully, um, because uh, you get one when you buy a starter and uh, play local win big uh, whiz kids eventsystem.com. I wish there were underlines in there or dashes. But anyway, this is uh, um, this is uh, the, the kit, so let's go ahead and open it up. I don't have my uh, uh, face cutting knife of death available, so we're going to have to do this old school with chopped down thumbnails and all that other fun stuff. So let's get those follicles to work. Uh -huh. There we go. Now there are a few changes between uh, the regular um, Dice Masters for Marvel and DC and uh, Dice Masters for D&D. &D. Uh, first of all, they refer to heroes as characters. They refer to uh, their sidekicks as NPCs. And there are monsters in here. Uh, they refer to things as creatures and stuff like that as well. So here's your standard um, playset. And it turns out that WizKids has uh, the instructions and playmats available for print out online. So you can actually print out your stuff and get a bigger playmat if you want. So everything is pretty much the same, uh, where you've got cards and dice, and you buy your dice with dice and stuff like that. They now have a, a cardboard insert to keep it nice and tight. How very awesome. And they put more tape. This is where my face cutting knife of doom would come most in handy, but I don't have it. So in here we have our standard pack, which when we open it up, you will see that we've got... Okay, so, <laughs> uh, interrupted by my son. We now have a checklist that is not a card, it's a piece of flimsy piece of paper. Yeah, um, that's fine, neither here nor there. I wonder if they would have saved money printing it on card stock instead of on separate paper. Um, then we have our brown, our pink, and our purple um, dice differentiators. And here we are. We've got all of our uh, um, basic action cards. Stinking Cloud, Resurrection, Polymorph, Magic Missile, Fireball, Finger of Death, Dimension Door, and Cone of Cold, and Charm. Oh, and Blessing. So here we are. These are, these are all the basic actions, and they are all actually spells from D&D. &D. Um, anybody who plays D&D, &D, you will definitely recognize these. So let's just take a look at Stinking Cloud. It says, deal one damage to all characters, both players' characters. Level one characters can't attack or block this turn. Okay. So you can only have three. Here, let's bring that up. Um, as you can see, ah, there we go. You can only use three in the deck, and it costs two. So that's a pretty powerful spell, um, actually. And let's take a look at the number five, the Finger of Death that I saw. Here we are. Finger of Death. <clears throat> move a level one character from the field to its prep area. Asterisk. Instead, move a character of any level. Asterisk, asterisk. Instead, move a character of any level to its bag. That is actually pretty good. Um, you can only have three of these. And, of course, um, they're the basic actions, and there are only three available, and it's a five. So uh, the power difference is 
quite apparent. So you go from two to five. Let's take a look in the dead center. Let's look at a three magic missile. That is an iconic D&D spell. And let's take a look and see what it does. It says, deal two damage to target character or player. Uh, asterisk, asterisk, deal extra damage to a character equal to the level of your highest level adventurer in the field. Uh, global, pay, energy, lightning energy, deal one damage to a character. That is very, very iconic. So you can deal one damage um, with any amount of uh, electrical energy. So you can, if you have a lot of it, you can deal quite a bit of damage. Um, and that's both players can use it, but that um, the double boost uh, deal extra damage to a character equal to the level of your highest level adventurer in the field. So that's probably between one and three, and that, my friends, is a pretty nice ability. So <laughs> I see anybody using magic missile, you can go ahead and um, spam that a couple of times. Now here are characters we've got. Um, these are monsters, actually. You can tell the monsters because they've got the, the slash underneath there. They're like villains. Um, and then here are our characters. And they have the different factions. It looks like clerics and fighters and stuff like that. So um, I'll have to take a closer look at exactly what those are since I just opened the box. I don't know. Um, but we've got all these different things. Let's take a look at the Beholder Master Aberration. All right. <clears throat> If this is the first die assigned to attack this turn, you may immediately use each of the basic action dice abilities without burst once, as if you had rolled those dice. Oh my gosh. Global, pay one energy. Move a die showing an action face from your reserve to your prep area. Do not roll it next turn. And... He goes uh, 043054 and a 165. Wow, how, how, but he costs 7. So that is a very, very, very scary thing. Um, and from what I understand, in casual play, um, you can go ahead and mix and match these as much as you want. I know for a fact that uh, when it comes to organized play, tournaments and stuff like that, WizKids does not want you mixing and matching sets. Um, Though I can understand if you wanted to do that, because I most certainly will in casual play. If we ever do an um, do an official, officially sanctioned tournament or something like that, it's going to be like Avengers versus X Men or um, some of the other sets that we have available to us. Uh, okay, and then we get our our cheesy uh, dice bags for those who don't have dice bags our silica pack, so we'll get rid of that. And then we have all of our dice. So I'm just gonna put those in like this. And I'm gonna turn them out. We've seen these dice before. And there's gonna be a bunch that's stuck in the bottom, that's fine. Um, so here's our NPCs. Hey, we're familiar with these. We'll just go ahead and put those over in here since the NPCs really mean nothing to us. Um, we've seen them before in uh, the other sets are identical. They're just called NPCs instead of sidekicks. So these are the actual dice here. I'm not sure which is which yet, but uh, we'll find out as we play. And as always, there's two of each die. And uh, um, this one is actually, if I hold it up to the light, you can see that it's sort of like a greenish um, translucent die. Um, I like that. And then we, oh, we have a little plastic cover, which is keeping them all in place there. And let's see. Here's some of the other dice. It looks like the blue one there in the middle might be a little translucent. Just slightly. All right. And then there's those three again. And then we have these guys here. The pink one is looking kind of cool. And the yellow one, I wish the... That was marked in like green or orange to make it look like it was toxic or something. That looks like it's a goblin die. And then here we go again. I think this is the, the beholder. Yeah, it is. And then finally we have two green ones and then the translucent green. Here we go. So overall, I think I like the set. 
It's really, really nice looking. Um, I think the monsters would be great to have your superheroes fight. So, whenever you get like the weird world kind of uh, battles, like uh, when Spider-Man goes into another dimension and has to fight monsters or dinosaurs or whatever, just crack out a couple of these guys and fight. From what I understand though, um, you can use the basic actions from this game and the other games. And this is the thing I hate about the starter box. The instructions just don't want to fit in. There we go. So that's the starter box. Um, how about we go ahead and crack open some of these booster packs. Now, it's a foil and a foil pack. You can hear it. That's supposed to have collectible stuff in there. I would say that the dice are not collectible because once you get one die, that's all you really need. Um, I try to get a full play set of four, um, five if I can, eight if I'm really lucky. And I think they say that the, the cards are collectible, but WizKids doesn't quite get the whole idea that putting stuff in flimsy foil packs makes for a very bad product coming out. Um, as seen with the Avengers vs. X-Men, all the cards were warped. Now these are a little bit better. They're nice and they're somewhat flat, but I wouldn't call this collectible in any sense of the means. Look at that warp that's on there. So here we've got a red dragon. Well, that's a pretty good one that we got right off the bat. And then we've got our Tarrasque. And uh, as you can see, we've got different rarities. The base sets, as you know, are going to be um, black. Um, and then we'll have our uncommons, commons, rares, uh, and ultra rares, and stuff like that, and the other one. So, and here's our dice. Here's a red dragon die, which I think is looking pretty sharp. There we go. There we go. Still getting used to the camera. Sorry about that. So he's a 7-7. Seven, seven. When he's at his 2, a 5-5 five, five when he's at his 1, and an 8-8 eight, eight when he's at his 3rd level. That is quite sweet. And then this is the Tarrasque, who's a 9-7 um, at 3, a 6-3 at 1, and where's the other face? 7-4 at 2. Sorry, my son is really excited about uh, some car videos he's watching on YouTube for kids. Uh, on his iPad, so <laughs> that's that's why he keeps shouting randomly. All right, so that's that's one set. Let's reach down into the bag, and I'm just going to pull out a handful, yeah, a handful, and we'll open up this. And I, I think that that'll be good. You get the gist of what's going on. Um, I'll open up the rest of them after or off camera, and we'll see what we get there. I'm going to put all the trash over here to the right. Actually, there we go. All right, we have the Beholder, Lesser Aberration, and a Zombie, Greater Undead. And uh, they're associated dice. And well, actually, we have our, our gray and our gray. Let's go ahead and color code them. So let's go ahead and pull out the book because that's going to tell us the colors. I always forget the color for rarity and everything like that. So let's see here. It's listed somewhere, or at least it should be. Okay, a note on rarity. Um, each expansion pack has cards of different rarities, each with a matching die. Common cards have a gray border above the die index. Uncommon have green. Rare cards have yellow. And the super rare have a red. Promotional cards with blue borders can be obtained through organized play. So I don't have any promotional cards. Ah, oh, sorry, I've got a cold. So we have commons and uncommons right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the dice down here underneath and... Uh, We'll, we'll have them laid out like this. So here's our commons, our uncommons, and we'll have our rares and our super rares. Um, if we get to the super rares at all, let's see what we have here. <laughs> okay, there's, looks like an illithid is in there. Illithid, they are called mind flayers in their common term, common names, and you can see, look at that bend in there. Okay, we have a Mind Flayer that is green. 
And then we have a gelatinous cube. There we go. And the gelatinous cube is one that's translucent. Mind Flayer has like an octopus head on there. Because, you no, know, they've got octopi. They've got a cephalopod head. I think that's what it's called, a cephalopod? Is that what an octopus is? Oct octopi and squids or cephalopods? I can't remember. All right, we have a half dragon. A lesser humanoid. And then we've got a copper dragon. They're both common. But we've got two dragons and a half of a dragon. So let's see here. There's a copper dragon and a red dragon. And then here is the half dragon. Hmm. You'd think that they would uh, make the dragons have similar die faces, just different colors. But I guess... Um, they don't want to do that. With uh, Avengers vs. X-Men and um, Uncanny X-Men, they actually had a lot of sets that had the same die faces, but different colors, so I guess they want to save the, the so Red Dragon and another set is a different die. So here we are. We've got a Frost Giant, Uncommon, and a Manticore, which is a, a common. There's the Frost Giant and the Manticore dice. Like so, yeah. You know. I think those are all right side up. Yep, they are. All right, let's open up the next pack. And we pull out, well, it looks like a fighting base monster. So physical based. We have a Sturge. A giant bloodsuckers, giant mosquitoes. And then we have another copper dragon. Now this copper dragon, let's take a look. Is it the same? Lesser dragon, lesser dragon. Yeah, it's the same dragon. As you know, um, the title and the subtitle can be different. So, there we go. There's a uh, Sturge, and we've got another copper dragon. I'll just put it down underneath like this. There we go. So, I've got 16 minutes left on this battery charge. We'll open up how many ever we can, and then... Uh, I'll cut it there. So we got a nice big dude. We've got another Tarrasque. That is an uncommon. And then we've got a Kobold, which is a common. So I was hoping to get a Kobold someday. There's another Tarrasque. There's a Kobold. And then, let's see here, what do we have here? We've got... All right. We have a half-orc fighter, who's a common, and we have another kobold. Lesser humanoid? Yep, both lesser humanoid. So there is our half-orc fighter, and there is our second kobold. What D&D world would not be complete without some kobolds? Come on up the works, you know what I'm saying? Get another handful, and let's just keep opening. Why not? Why not? I've got enough of them. I tend to go a little overboard when it comes to the boosters, since they're, like, a buck each. So a lot easier to just go ahead and grab a bunch of them. So we've got a Minotaur and we've got ooh an invisible stalker. Look at that yellow. It's a nice rare. And let's see what his power is. Since he's rare, he should be pretty strong. So invisible stalker must block if able. When fielded, at least one character must attack on your opponent's next turn. Okay. So, that forces people to attack, and here is our Minotaur die, and our Invisible Stalker die. Now, that looks kind of cool. Nice white, and all you see is his feet. Alright, let's see what's in the next one. we got a Tangerine die, it looks like. I'm really fighting coughing, so if uh, it goes mute, then you know what's happened. So we have a lesser red dragon, and we've got a prismatic spray, which is a lesser spell. I'm going to go ahead and put that, no, we'll just put it there. So here is our lesser red dragon. So we have another red dragon die. And then here is our spell. And as you can see, it's, whoops, sorry, as you can see, it's got the generic um, energy symbol, and then it's got the spell symbol. So this is an action die um, that is... Uh, not a character, it's not an NPC or a monster. And it's not a basic action die, but it's one of those uh, ones that you use with it. And it's 
got its own special die so you don't need to use the basic dice. So we have another, oh we've got a half orc fighter and an owl bear. Yeah, the half orc fighter um, is a different version because the first one was common, this is an uncommon. And then here's our owl bear. You can see all the dice there. We'll just put the owl bear there. I like the the headshot on that. Let's see what we have in this one. We've got this. A blank card. No. Uh, limited wish and another owl bear. So we've got another spell. Choose any unpurchased die, yours, or from the basic action cards, and roll it. If you roll a non-energy face, place the die in your used pile. So this is a way to get things without having to actually pay for them. That is awesome. So those 7 and 8s, like the Tarasks and stuff, are very easy to get a hold of. Well, easier, not very easy. And then this is our limited wish with a, with a genie lamp. Or... Or at least an Oriental or a Middle Eastern lamp that you get from like Aladdin and stuff like that. All right, we've got a skeleton and a blue dragon, the lesser dragon, blue dragon. So here's our skeleton die, which is a very, very straightforward and nice looking die. It's got green. I'll bring it up close so you can see it. It's got a nice green inking on a bone white kind of surface. I think that looks really nice. And then here's our blue dragon. That's that's pretty pretty blue dragony. Well, we don't have much time left. Let's go ahead and get what I have left on the table done and I'll do an outro. Yeah. So here we go. Boom. We have a magic helmet. Which is greater gear. It's uncommon and a, a lesser skeleton. Yep, lesser undead, lesser undead. So we've got another skeleton, which we've seen that one. And then we've got a magic helmet. Not bad. I'm going to have to put together a crew here soon for D&D uh, &D Dungeon Master, uh, Dice Masters. All right, so we've got a manticore. And we've got a Minotaur, a rare, a rare Minotaur. Let's see what this rare Minotaur does. <sighs> when assigned to attack, Minotaur captures one opposing die of a lower level. This die remains captured until the capturing die leaves the field or uses the ability again. Nice, nice, nice. Um, one thing I wish they had done is on the dice if they had put a level counter on there. Because this is the fielding cost, and it's one, two, uh, it's, there's two, one, and one. That doesn't indicate the level at all. You have to look at the card. Like the manticore there is showing um, the one, four, the two, eight, and the four, five are levels one, two, and three. And this is another minotaur die, which I have right there. Yep. Eight minutes remain. I'm just doing the battery countdown because uh, I need to be cognizant of uh, this camera's capabilities. Here we go. We've got, ooh, a Dwarf Cleric Rare and a Troll Common. The Dwarf Cleric. Experience. Once per turn, gain a plus one attack, plus one defense token when you knock out a monster. When assigned to attack, reroll all opposing undead characters. Move any dice showing energy faces to the used pile. Now, the Dwarf Cleric um, shows experience. It's a new mechanic in D&D, uh, Dice Masters. And you can put a token on there, and when they gain experience, they get a plus one attack, plus one defense um, on them whenever they uh, do that. So they will grow in power. They go 2 to 5 um, to 3 to 6 and so on and so forth as they go up in level. And here is that Dwarf Cleric die. And then this is that Troll die. Woo! Trolls. Alright. And then lastly, we have 
these guys. We've got a Pit Fiend and a Were Rat. Uncommon and common. So there's the Were Rat die, and here's the Pit Fiend die. All right. I will see you in just a moment. Hey everybody, this is um, another unboxing, and this uh, was uh, for the Dungeons and Dragons Dice Masters uh, Battle for Faerun set. Now, uh, one of the interesting things is my camera ran out of juice, so I'm doing this up in my office. So uh, that's why I change of venue here. Um, this is going to turn out to be a really awesome set. I've grown up with Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I don't, I can barely remember a time when it wasn't in my life, and uh, now that we have a uh, uh, quote unquote micro game for it. This is more than a, a micro game though. This is going to be pretty fun. It's, um, I'm looking at it as like Magic the Gathering style for um, dice based games and uh, uh, it's a pretty good analogy I think uh, though it's not quite as widespread. There are um, um, official play events and stuff like that that will net you promo cards and stuff and uh, I've got one promo card, it's a Boo and Minsk, as I said before, because I bought a, a starter. Now, I bought two starters, I'm going to see if I can get two of the cards so I can share. I don't know if it comes with dice or not. Um, I would think it does, because if it shares dice with other things, I'm going to be a little upset, just a little, because uh, you'd think that a promo card would come with its own dice. Unless, of course, it's like an action card or something, then, of course, you can use the action dice. But, uh... On top of that, we opened up a bunch of uh, uh, foil boosters, and that got um, quite a few cool things, like two or three rares, um, a lot of commons, of course, and some uncommons. Now, um, that's the one thing I really, really hate about the game, is getting the randomness from the boosters. I wish you could just go out and buy the complete set and be done with it, like Warriors. Because then you can just play and play and play. It puts everybody on an equal footing. But then again, all the decks, all the teams are going to be the same unless you set up some sort of drafting system or whatever. Uh, there are rainbow drafts and all that stuff available. There's also uh, multiplayer variants, team battles and stuff. Um, we tried doing uh, uh, a free-for-all with three players, and that didn't turn out too good because... Uh, um, my crew actually overran the other two with uh, with relative ease, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to try and record a game or two of Dice Masters as it's being played so that you can see how it's played and uh, also see some of my crews. Um, and I think I'm going to start doing some videos with uh, um, team breakdowns or crew breakdowns, so to speak. I've got a couple of them that I use. One is the Femme Fatales and one is the Avengers. And uh, I make... Um, big use out of using uh, Nick Fury in that. So uh, these are for casual play, they're not for tournament legal play. Tournament legal play means that the sets have to be all, all the, all the heroes have to be from one set. You can't mix and match sets, which is kind of silly, but uh, technically I could, um, in casual play, you could play with Dungeons and Dragons, you could play with Yu-Gi-Oh, which I have right up there, you can see it. Um, let's see here, it's right there. Yu-Gi-Oh! You can play with Avengers vs. X-Men and Uncanny um, X-Men DC and uh, anything else that comes out. I wouldn't be surprised if they came out with Pokemon dice. Uh, that would be kind of fun. Um, Pokemon dice, that'd be, that'd be a huge hit with a lot of the kids anyway. Um, not to mention I'd buy into it because you got to catch them all, right? Anyway, um, <clears throat> so my cold is uh, still here. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it in this in the nasal or not, but uh, um, uh, that's it for this unboxing. Um, I'm going to open up the rest of those boosters off camera and see what I get, and uh, if I find anything good, I'll report on it. But uh, for the most part, uh, that's that's it for the Dungeons & Dragons Dice Masters Battle for Faerun. Um, I got two of the boosters, uh, two of the starters, and uh, a bunch of the boosters. Um, I highly suggest that whenever you buy starters, get two of them. While this does handle two players, the number of dice you get per character or creature or whatever is piddly. It's infeasible. Um, since most of the cards go up to four, some go up to five, um, 
the only things that you're going to have duplicates of, you're going to have more than you need of the, um, whatchamacallit, uh, more than you need of the NPCs or sidekicks, and more than you need of the, the uh, basic action dice, but everything else you'll get doubles of, even the cards, WizKids, $30 would be perfectly fine, maybe 25 for a full set that matches all the cards, and that would be awesome. Uh, why you keep putting it like this, uh, the price point is like 15 bucks for a starter. That's that's good entry, but the main thing is you need to have a deluxe starter that has dice for every single card at maximum dice. So uh, if you have a five, you got five of that die. If you've got a four, you got four of that die. None of this digging through boosters to hopefully find these or spending 30 bucks for all the duplicate junk that you get. Um, I don't mind the duplicates. That's me. Um, but if you want to make this collectible, you need to be able to give people everything you need in a starter. That's my opinion. Um, and I'm going to say that. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And I'm going to post about it until you eventually come out with a deluxe starter that has all the dice necessary for the base game. Or you uh, put out a deluxe set that has all the dice necessary to play every single card. And uh, that would be beyond awesome. Because the number of cards you have do not necessarily mean you need that many dice. So, for instance, in here, each of the characters has three cards. And... Um, you need between three to five dice, maybe two to five dice for each one. Maybe up to six for some of the really, really weak ones. I haven't seen a six yet, a max six card. But uh, um, if you gave the maximum number of dice that's listed on the card for the one that's the most uh, populous, so if you've got a, a three, a four, and a five of uh, the same thing, say like kobolds, um, then you give them five dice so that you can cover all of those cards since you're only allowed to use one of those cards anyway anyway enough of my rant this this is gonna be a fun game they all are I just wish that the dice were distributed a little bit better and uh, the starters were a bit more robust um, I would pay twenty five to thirty dollars for the base set with all the dice in it rather than just getting half of what you need uh, for a good game anyway until next time, enjoy playing games. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. And as always, this is Excalibur, and I am out.